Have you ever heard Bitcoin described as one of the most important technological discoveries in history? Ever tried to read the white paper? Unless you have a degree in cryptography, it looks like gibberish. I'm going to explain the main sections of the Bitcoin white paper in a way that's easy to understand. Imagine you want to send your friends money online. Usually you have to go through a bank or another company to do this. Bitcoin is like an online version of cash that lets you send money directly to your friends without needing a bank. It uses special math called cryptography to make sure nobody can cheat, like spending their Bitcoin twice. Right now, when you buy something online, you usually need a bank or a company like PayPal to help with the payment. This works okay, but it can be slow and sometimes expensive. And if you want to take back a payment, it can get complicated. You have to use a middleman and all the associated BS. Bitcoin solves this by letting people pay each other directly. Bitcoin works like a chain of digital signatures. When you spend Bitcoin, you sign it over to the next person. The next person can check the signatures to make sure the Bitcoin is real. But there's a problem. How do you know someone hasn't spent that Bitcoin somewhere else too? Usually banks check this, but Bitcoin does it differently. To make sure no one spends their Bitcoin twice, Bitcoin collects a bunch of transactions into one block. Then it stamps the block with a timestamp. It's like putting a seal on it that says these transactions happened at this block. Each new block links to the previous one making a chain. This chain shows the history of all Bitcoin transactions. Add a new block to the chain, a computer has to solve a difficult puzzle. This takes time and energy. Once the puzzle is solved, the block is added to the chain. If someone tries to change an old transaction, they'd have to redo the puzzle for that block and all the blocks after it, which is almost impossible. The Bitcoin network is made up of people's computers. Anyone can join and help keep track of the transactions. When someone solves the puzzle for a new block, they tell everyone else, and everyone adds it to their own copy of the chain. People who help add new blocks to the chain get rewarded with new Bitcoin. This encourages people to help maintain the network. Over time, this reward decreases, and it's believed miners will instead earn money from transaction fees. As the chain of blocks gets longer, it takes up more space on computers. Bitcoin has a way to save space by only keeping the most important information from old transactions. You don't need to have the whole blockchain to check transactions. You can just keep a part of it, which makes it easier for regular users to use Bitcoin without needing powerful computers. Bitcoin transactions can involve multiple people and amounts. You can combine smaller amounts of Bitcoin or split a large amount, just like how you can get change for a dollar. Even though Bitcoin transactions are public, it's hard to know who is sending Bitcoin to whom. People use digital keys that are hard to link to real-world identities, which helps keep things private. This part talks about the math that proves Bitcoin is secure. It's fairly unlikely for someone to cheat the system, like making fake transactions or spending the same Bitcoin twice. It's run by everyone who uses it and is kept secure by math and computer power. That's the Bitcoin white paper in a nutshell. It introduces a new way of using money online that's different from what we're used to with banks.